Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Lightroom tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. I gotta say, there's nothing that, that quite warms the heart like really nailing some color correction um, and cleaning up a color cast on an image. Do that like before and after preview and it's just like, mmm. All is right with the world, right? Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna cover color correction in Adobe Lightroom in this tutorial. And I have to say, before we get going, if you enjoy the video, make sure you hit the little like button down there somewhere. Subscribe to this channel that way you never miss another Lightroom or photography related video in uh, the future. And if you really enjoy the tutorial and you want to support the channel in some way, shape, or form, you can pick up my Photoshop course. It's Photoshop, not Lightroom, I know, uh, but it's all about how to retouch images, which presumably you're interested in if you're here watching a Lightroom tutorial. Now I should also mention before we get going, every time I do a color correction tutorial, there's always people that say like, hey, uh, you're color correcting too much by the numbers. It's all about the eye and the beauty. I agree. And there's other people when I just do it to the eye, ooh, that's not technically right. You're also right. But the beauty of color correcting and photography and all this stuff is like we can just do what we want, right? And uh, if it looks good to me or you, great. If someone else hates it, great. Honestly, it's better to be loved by a few and hated by a bunch than just to have everybody look at your stuff and say, meh, yeah, it's... It's pretty good. Um, so yeah, let's talk about color correction in Adobe Lightroom now that I've finished up that spiel. Uh, right, so uh, I'm gonna grab this photo here and this photo looks great, right? Because we were just looking at a photo that was super blue, which leads me right into my first point that you can't always trust your eyes because your eyes are always doing this thing where they're trying to like, auto color correct for you. So when I go from a very blue image like this to a very warm image, this photo either looks really great to your eyes or it looks super warm. Well, we can really check these things by using the white balance tool here in Adobe Lightroom. It's this right here. It's a big eyedropper and I'm not even gonna click on it because the, the best way to use it, I think, is using the hotkey W. Pick it up, W to put it down, W to pick it up, put it down. One of the coolest things about this tool is when you hover over a part of your image, you get an RGB readout. Now I could move to his skin and say, all right, red should be a little higher than greens, which should be a little higher than blues. And his skin looks pretty good. Maybe the difference between the numbers is a little bit too big, indicating that he's a little too warm, but you know, not bad. But really where this tool is powerful is when I hover over something like his shirt, I know his shirt should be white. Uh, and, and it obviously doesn't need to be solid white, but it should be devoid of other colors as long as I'm not selecting in an area where there's reflected color light, uh, like colored light reflecting onto it. So if I select or hover this too close to his jacket, there's going to be some of that beige yellowy color just naturally being cast onto the white shirt. But if I select sort of a diffused highlight on the shirt, I'm going to get a fairly accurate reading. And I can see here that it's pretty close, but blues and greens are a little low. If this is a variation of white or gray, reds, greens, and blues should be identical, right? Because there's no deviation. There's no more blue in white than there is red, and there's no more green in white than there is blue. White is just the perfect, or any any shade of gray, it's the perfect, uh, the, the exact same amount of reds, greens, and blues being fed in to make that gray. So if you have too much red, Likelihood is you have a red color cast. If you have too much green, green color cast, blue, blue color cast. You get the point, right? Uh, we can also check out the, Insta uh, the Instagram. I always do that. The histogram. And that can give you some ideas in terms of if you have a crazy red spike or a crazy blue spike somewhere, a crazy green, yellow, cyan, whatever spike. Um, and it's also important to note and just a really helpful thing in general. Red and cyan are opposites. So RGB, think of it right along the line with CMYK. So red and cyan are opposites. Green and magenta are opposites. Yellow and, or I'm sorry, blue and yellow are opposites. So if you're reducing blue in an image, you're increasing yellow in an image and so on and so forth. So that can be very helpful if we say, uh, hey, this photo looks like it has a super crazy magenta color cast. The problem is usually there's just not enough green in the photo. There's too much magenta. There's not enough green. So it's an easy way to get in and kind of think about where the color cast is coming from. All right, so we have this. When we hover over his little collar with our eyedropper, uh, we can use this tool just by simply clicking, and it's going to, in theory, co correct that color cast by making a neutral color neutral. We can really screw things up if we go to, like, green and say, hey, that green should be neutral. See what it does? There's a huge cast of purple being flooded into the image because what's the opposite of green? Purple. Lightroom's trying to flood the image with purple to counterbalance that green, which you're telling it is wrong. I'm going to hit Command or Control Z to undo that. Uh, the white shirt, though, shouldn't have a color cast. So let's hover over the shirt and we can see that it's very close. 75.5, 0.6, and 0.6 for R, G, and B. That's amazing. That's very close to being perfectly neutral. I'm going to hit W to just hang up my color eyedropper tool. Now, there's another way we can do this. So over here in this version of the photo, I can again use the eyedropper tool 
tool, I can hover over a diffused highlight here, and I can see that red and green are pretty close, but there's a massive blue color cast in this image that needs to be neutralized. We can neutralize it manually if you like, uh, and this can be kind of fun. Just select the uh, input area of the white balance temperature slider, right, over here. I'll even magnify it. Just select that. You don't need to move anything. You don't need to touch the slider. You don't need to do anything. Just highlight that like that and hover with the white balance tool over an area that should be neutral. So we can see blues are super high, 85.6. So what I'll do is just use my up arrow key to start increasing. You can see the number, if you look at the white balance slider, that number is going up, right? And I'm watching my RGB numbers and I'm watching them get closer and closer and closer. And I've got B at 79.3, R at 79.1, and G at 78.1, super close. I can come down, oops, I wanna hover over kind of the same point. I can just hit tab and move down to my tint slider and there's not quite enough green so I can just knock the tint back down, negative five, let's just go negative five and look at that. Red 81.6, green 81.4, blue 81.6. We have totally neutralized the color in his white shirt and if his white shirt looks good, all the other pixels in the image are also going to look good. And this is a nicely corrected version of this photo. If I were to undo it a bunch of times and get back to where I was, you would see there's a huge difference between these two images. So just an example of where you can use Lightroom's sort of automated version where you find something that, and you just color correct it right off the bat. Or if you prefer... You select something that you know has a color cast. If it's like a tabletop or something, you say that definitely is too much green. You can just hover over it and use that tint slider and knock the green down by pushing magenta into the image. Now, another more sort of creative way, if you will, to color correct, um, definitely not doing it by the numbers, is using the little finger scrubby tool in the tone curve. So remember, bearing in mind that red and cyan are opposites, and by the way, we have all these color channels here underneath this RGB, okay, right? We got RGB, and oh, you may also have this parametric curve. You don't really want that. You want the point curve. So you want to hit this little icon right here, and it's going to take us over. Yep, it's going to collapse it and take us to our curve just like this. I haven't done that in a while, so it kind of surprised me. This is how I work. I never touch the other curve, or very rarely do I touch the other curve, I should say. But we have these channels here, an RGB, red, green, blue, and the RGB composite channel, which is going to have to do with your brightness. So if we're looking at this photo and we say, you know what, right off the bat, I can tell there's too much red in here. So what I can do is go to the red channel and I can use this little tool right here, little scrubby tool, right? The, the adjust point tool or whatever it's called. And I can select like on his skin or on his shirt, whatever. And I can just pull down a little bit. Now that's way too much. I'm just going to pull down a little bit, help neutralize it a little bit. Now it looks like there's a little bit too much green out there. So I can go to my green channel again with the slider. I can, you know, I'm going to take I'm taking his skin. I'm going to take just a little tiny bit of green out of his skin, something like that. Uh, I can go back to the reds now because I can look again at his skin and say, you know what, maybe there's still a little bit too much red in his skin. I can grab the little point scrubby tool and I can pull down just a little bit on his skin, something like that. And then I can go to the blue channel. It may look like there's a little bit too much blue. Again, I'm focusing on the lighter areas of the image to see if I can see a color cast. Um, I'll come out over here. It looks like there's a little bit too much blue. So I'll pull down to get rid of blue and therefore introduce some yellow. And you'll know like right there, obviously way too much yellow. So this is a very, very subtle effect. I could try pushing a little blue into it. You know what, if I push blue into it, that actually doesn't look bad. I think my initial instincts were wrong. I like it with some blue in there. And then all we have to do is hit, hit the little before after switch, shut the tone curve off, curve off, there it was before, and there it is after. So you can really go in and kind of neutralize to your taste as well if you don't even want to be distracted with the colors. We can grab our white balance tool and just check here. We're actually pretty close. Look at that, 69.5, 69.0, 69.0. I honestly didn't think I'd be able to get it that closely, but that's, you know, that's pretty right on. So what I'm really trying to emphasize here is there's a bunch of different ways to adjust white balance here in Lightroom. You can even do some white balance stuff down here in camera calibration. We haven't gotten into that, but I really want to move on and talk about this image here. And it's not necessarily color correction, but it's rather a very targeted color correction within an image. And this will probably end up being its own tutorial at some point, but I couldn't resist just doing it here. Correcting some sunburn. This is pretty cool. We're going to use the hue saturation option and hue saturation sliders can all also be used for color correction. So uh, obviously we have some crazy red going on here, uh, too much red. So the first thing we want to do is shift some of the red to orange. And I could use the finger scrubby here, but I just find when you start using the finger scrubby with the, the hue saturation lightness, you, you're going to move multiple sliders at the same time. And I just don't like it as much as taking control myself and knowing what I'm doing. So I'm going to bump the red slider toward orange, right? So I'm taking the red slider, moving it toward orange. Then I'm going to go to saturation and I think I'm going to reduce the saturation of the red a little bit. 
All right, we can use the little before after switch. We've already, you can see we've already made a change. And if we come over here to luminance now, let's just try brightening up the red and brighten it up until we kind of get something that's going to match a little bit, maybe darken the overall orange. Generally, skin tones have a lot of orange and a lot of red in them. Maybe we'll uh, we'll brighten up some of the magenta. I think we need to desaturate some of the magenta as well. There might be a little magenta there in the... Uh, in the sunburn, push that toward uh, orange a little bit more. I'm gonna slide the hue over even a little bit more now that we've done that. Maybe it needs to be desaturated a little bit more. And I'm really just looking at it, trying to make it blend as well as I can. I'm gonna hit the letter Y to give me a quick before and after. And you can see before, after. You can still see a little bit of lines in there, uh, but those lines can probably be healed up pretty effectively in Photoshop. Uh, but certainly in a matter of seconds to go from crazy sunburn tan lines to what doesn't really look like crazy sunburn tan lines. Uh, that's pretty impressive work there by Lightroom. And it's just a little taste of what you can do with not just color correcting overall, but some more targeted color correcting uh, even within a single image. So yeah, that is, that's pretty much it for color correcting in Lightroom. Um, just a nice little crash course on color correcting, how I like to play with color and adjust my colors in Lightroom. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, again, please hit the like button. That'd be great. Uh, subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video in the future, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, and for color correcting in Lightroom in a few different ways and also doing the sunburn trick, which I think you really find useful uh, here or there. Uh, that's it. Get it. Got it. Good. Nathaniel Dodson, touchweed.com. I'll catch you in the next one.